Our story today centers around a legendary figure, a massive, fearsome wolf named Fenrir. These tales are more than just myth. They offer us valuable insights into the beliefs, fears and hopes of the Vikings. Norse mythology is full of gods, giants and mythical beasts, and it has a rich history that has been passed down through ages. So, why should we care about Fenrir? Understanding mythology helps us understand the very essence of human culture. Myth explains the unexplainable, teach lessons and entertain. They also shape the identity of a person. Fenrir's story is a complex one, complete with prophecies, betrayal and ultimate chaos. It tells us about trust, consequences and the inevitable flow of fate. Remember to keep an open mind. The Norse people believed in these stories and they were an important part of daily life and culture. Today, we might see these tales as mere fictions, but to truly appreciate them, we must imagine ourselves in the world view of the Vikings. Let's turn the pages back to the early chapters of Norse mythology and set the stage for Fenrir's entrance into the world. In the chill and shadow of the ancient Nordic lands, where gods and giants shaped the narrative of existence, we find the beginning of our colossal wolf. Fenrir was not born in the halls of Asia, the main family gods in Norse myths. Instead, he came to life in the dark realm of Jotunheim, the land of the giants. His father Loki was a god known for his cunning and mischief. Loki could bring laughter as quickly as he could bring disaster. We made a full video about Loki if you are interested. Fenrir's mother, Engelbada, was a giantess of great power and an embodiment of many fears of the Norse people. Her very name speaks to her terrifying nature as Engelbada means the one who brings grief or foreboder of trouble. Together, this unlikely pair bore three unusual children. The eldest was Jormungandr, the Midgard serpent, destined to encircle the earth. The youngest was Hel, who would later rule over the cold and grim underworld for those who did not die gloriously in battle. And between them was Fenrir, the mighty wolf, whose destiny was entwined with the end of the world itself. From his earliest moments, Fenrir was the source of worry for the gods. Elfova, as Sirius, had prophesied that the children of Loki and Engelbuda would bring great misfortune upon the gods, and indeed, as Fenrir grew, so did the strength and ferocity. It was not his size that troubled the gods the most, though it was indeed formidable. It was a prophecy that lingered over his head like a dark cloud promising a storm. Imagine the gods in the hall, whispering among themselves. They knew Ragnarok, the doom of the gods was coming, and they were aware that Fenrir would play a crucial role in it. A wolf that might grow to consume the world was a threat that could not be ignored. But what could be done about such force of nature? The gods were not without their resources and wisdom. They decided to raise Fenrir amongst them, hoping in understanding him they might find a way to alter or delay the grim future that awaited. As the wolf grew, so did the tension in the halls of Asia. They watched with growing unease as Fenrir's size and might quickly surpassed any wolf they had ever seen. But what comes next is a tale of deceit, an effort to control destiny and a bond to try to hold back chaos. As Fenrir grew larger and stronger, he became a deep source of fear for the gods. They could not forget the prophecy that one day Fenrir would rise against them. They started to think of a plan to protect themselves for this terrifying future. They decided the best way was to keep Fenrir under control was to put him in chains. The gods tried two times to bind Fenrir with strong chains, but each time they failed. Fenrir was too strong and broke the chains easily. He enjoyed these games, showing off his mighty strength. It became clear that no ordinary chain could hold the beast. So, the Aesir turned to the dwarves. Known for their unmatched skill and crafting, they asked them to make something special, something powerful that could bind Fenrir for good. The dwarves created Gleipnir, a magical ribbon that was thin and soft, but stronger than any chain. It was made from six impossible things, the sound of a cat's footstep, a woman's beard, the roots of a mountain, the sinews of a bear, the breath of a fish and the bird's spit. The gods knew that Fenrir would not agree to be bound with Gleipnir without some kind of trick. They went back to Fenrir and told them they had found a new chain and that it was so strong they were sure he could not break it. 
They made it seem like a game, like the other times, and challenged Fenrir to try and break this new chain. But Fenrir was no fool. He could sense something was different this time. He agreed to be bound by Gleipnir, but on one condition. He asked that one of the gods put a hand in his mouth as a sign of trust. If the chain held him, he would bite the hand off. The gods were scared, but Tyr, the brave god of war, agreed and put his hand into the wall's huge mouth. The other gods tied Fenrir with Gleipnir, and as Fenrir realized he could not escape, he bit off Tyr's hand. That moment marked the loss of trust between the gods and Fenrir forever. Fenrir was angry and howling. He tried hard to escape, but Gleipnir held him tight. The gods placed a sword in his mouth to keep it open, and with his saliva, a river called Fan, or translated hope, came flowing out. For now, the gods had contained the threat of Fenrir, but they didn't know for how long. They had used trickery and lost one of their own in the process. With Fenrir bound to the magical Gleipnir, the gods of Asgard felt a momentary sense of relief. However, they could not escape the shadow of the prophecy that foretold their doom, and they knew the binding of Fenrir was merely a temporary measure. As Fenrir remained chained up, the days moved towards the twilight of the gods, known as Ragnarok. It was during this time that the great wolf would have his revenge. This prophecy said that when Ragnarok began, Fenrir would break free from his bonds and join the forces of chaos. Indeed, the prophecy came true. The earth shook and Fenrir, filled with fury and a hunger for freedom, snapped the unbreakable Gleipnir and unleashed his wrath upon the world. It was said that his mouth would stretch from skies to the ground, a symbol of his rage and power. Fenrir's role in Ragnarok was pivotal. Among his first acts of destruction, he sought out Odin, the All-Father and the chief of the Asia gods. Odin was wise and powerful, but the prophecy had always stated that he would fall to the Great Wolf. In a ferocious battle, Fenrir devoured Odin, fulfilling a part of the dark vision that had haunted the gods. The loss of Odin was a great blow to Asia, but the battle did not end there. Following Odin's fall, one of his sons, a noble god Vyder, stepped forward. Consumed by grief and anger, Vyder avenged his father. He would place a foot on Fenrir's lower jaw, a foot clad in a shoe that had been crafted from all the scraps of leather that the mortals had thrown away. Then, summoning all of his strength, Father Thor apart Fenrir's mouth, ending the world's reign of terror. Through this act, Father showed the might of determination and the power that even the seemingly insignificant can have when properly harnessed. Fenrir's story in the context of Ragnarok served as a grim reminder that the forces of chaos and destruction cannot be bound forever. The gods' attempts to prevent their fates, in the end, only delayed the inevitable. Fenrir's tale is tragic, he was a creature brought to life by the gods, raised among them, and ultimately became the instrument of their destruction. Let's talk about what Fenrir stood for in the world of the Norse people. He was the embodiment of chaos and the wild, untamed nature that lies beyond the control of the gods and humans alike. Just as the Norse people respected and feared the natural elements and the power of the wilds, they saw Fenrir as a force to be both honored and dreaded. The Norse value bravery, strength and the ability to face one's fears. Fenrir was the ultimate challenge, a test of courage for even the mightiest of gods. The gods' inability to tame Fenrir reflects the idea that some of the aspects of nature cannot be controlled. They can be held back, but eventually their power will be unleashed, often with devastating consequences. Fenrir's tale also speaks to the concept of fate within Norse mythology. The Norse believed in a fixed destiny and no matter how hard the gods tried to avoid their prophesied end, it came to pass. Fenrir was also bound by this fate. From the moment of his birth, his destiny was intertwined with Ragnarok. Furthermore, Fenrir can be seen as a symbol of betrayal and lost trust. The gods raised him, but they also feared him, and in the end, they betrayed him by binding him. By asking for a god's hand in his mouth, Fenrir showed his awareness of their deceit. The gods' actions and Fenrir's response underline a key moral lesson. The consequences of a broken trust are severe and lasting. Finally, Fenrir represents the cycle of life and destructions that is central to Norse mythology. Just as winters come and go, and as life follows death, 
Fenrir's breaking free from Ragnarok symbolizes the inevitable decline and the rebirth of the world. In the next chapter we will look how Fenrir has influenced modern culture. You might be surprised to find out how this ancient monster still makes appearances in stories and games today. The story of Fenrir has captured the imagination of people for centuries. Even today his legacy endures in modern culture. Time has transformed Fenrir from a mythic beast into a symbol used in various forms of media including books, movies and video games. In literature, Fenrir appears in many fantasy novels, where his name and character are often used to represent strength, wildness and unpredictability. Authors draw inspiration from his mythical characteristics to create compelling, complex characters that echo the ancient wolf's power and presence. Moving on to the big screen, movies often reference Norse mythology. While Fenrir himself may not always be a central character, his influence can be seen. The themes of chaos versus order and the struggle against destiny draw directly from the story. Video games known for exploring mythical and fantasy worlds have also found a place for Fenrir. Game creators have reimagined him both as a monstrous enemy to be defeated and as a powerful ally or a playable character. Through these mediums, the ancient tale of Fenrir continues to influence modern storytelling. His story, originally told by the Norse, has taken on new forms showing that myth can evolve over time to remain relevant and engaging. In our modern world, where chaos and order still clash, Fenrir serves as a reminder of the world's unpredictable nature. The wolf's image has even been used in popular culture, such as a logos or a mascot symbolizing strength, tenacity and fierce independence. This concludes our story about Fenrir. However, if you are eager for more stories from the Asian mythology or have thoughts on the chapters we have covered, please feel free to comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe for more epic tales and explorations into myths that have shaped the world. Until next time.